Hi, welcome to Board Gems, my video series in which I cover older board game gems. And this game is pretty old, Perudo or Dudo, also known as the second most addictive thing to come out of South America. So it is also known as Liar's Dice and Bluff. Richard Borg, a game designer, most famous now for the Commands and Colors series, uh, he developed, he, he often works with dice games. He also has an interesting variant for Yahtzee called Yahtzee Free For All, which I might cover at some point. He likes to work with dice, and this is a dice game. It originally came out from Milton Bradley in the 1980s, I think. And this version, Bluff, was originally not from Ravensburger. It was originally from FX Schmidt. And came out in, I want to say, 1993. I think that's when it won the Spiel des Jahres. Uh, you can see the Spiel des Jahres logo there. This Ravensburger edition is pretty much identical to that FX Schmidt edition. Uh, Liar's Dice and Bluff are basically the same game. Perudo and Dudo are basically the same game. They're definitely related. They're basically the same game. But you can kind of divide them into kind of two ways of playing there's it's an older game there's lots of variants people any group you meet is probably going to play this in a different way bluff is not the most common name at least in the english language is mostly known as liar's dice and there's lots of versions of liar's dice including licensed versions so i've seen one that was of the simpsons uh, which had um, dice cups as uh, duff beer cans and also a version uh, licensed from Pirates of the Caribbean because the game itself, Liar's Dice, was featured in the second Pirates of the Caribbean movie. Davy Jones Locker? Dead Man's Chest? Something? I mean, there was one with Davy Jones in it anyway. I'm going to show you how this plays. Afterwards, we'll talk about why it's still a gem today, although there are other bluffing games that came out since then, which I prefer more, but this is still a good game. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about the ver the variations, the differences between Liar's Dice Bluff and Perudo Dudo. I wouldn't say I'm some big Liar's Dice expert, but I can talk a little bit about them. And uh, we'll talk about that after I show you how to play. To set up the game, place the board on the table between the players and place with the board this red die. All the dice in the game are the same, they're numbered 1 to 5, and instead of a 6, there's a star. Just keep this die on or near the board, and give each player 5 dice. In some versions, each player will get their own color, so you'll get the 5 dice and a cup. And you're ready to begin. The goal of the game is to be the last player left in the game. Over the course of the game, players will be losing their dice, and once a player runs out of dice, they're out of the game. The other players continue until there's only one player left. A round starts, all the players take all five dice, put them in their cup, and shake them. This is going to get noisy. I'll do that for all the players. We're simulating a four-player game. And keep the dice hidden, but each player can look at their own dice. So I'm revealing this for you, but of course when you're playing, you're not revealing it, you're just peeking under the cup so you can see what you have. Players are going to make bids, guesses, on how many of a particular value is under everyone's cups. The stars are wild. They count as everything. So what that means is right now I have five fives, because they're all valued five. How many threes do I have? I have three threes, because these stars are three. How many ones do I have? Three, right? Because stars are everything. So for each die, there's a one in three chance that it's of a particular value. So the start player is going to look at their own dice. They can't see anybody else's. And knowing how many dice are in play, right now there's 20 dice in this, at the start of a four player game. The player, the starting player, is going to offer a guess of what they think is under everyone's cups. And to do that, you use the red die. You set it to the value that you want to guess, 
and you place it on the board relative to the number of that value that you think is under everyone's cups. So if I were to do this, for example, I'm placing the five value on the three space. What that means is I'm guessing, I'm bidding, I'm suggesting that I think there are at least three fives under everyone's cups. Of course, I know there's at least five fives. Then it goes to the player, to the start player's left. It's gonna go clockwise from there. And that player has a choice. They can either increase the bid or they can challenge the last bid. Only the next player can challenge. You can only challenge the player who played just before you. In order to increase the bid, you have to either move the die to a higher position on this track or increase the value, or both. So five is actually the highest value. So the next player, if they wanted to increase the bid, could not increase it past five. But they could bid four of something. They could bid four ones or four threes or four fives, or of course, you know, seven fives if they want. Anything that's higher than the last bid. If the last bid was four, then instead of moving it to a later space, they could increase it to, in this example, five. And you notice some of the spaces have stars. These spaces can only be used to guess the number of stars. This is considered higher than this space. So whereas this player might say, I think there are at least three fives, you could increase the bid by saying, I think there are at least two stars. It's on a higher space, a space further along the track, so that's a valid bid. And if the next person wants to increase the bid, then they would have to move the die to a later space. There's a one in six chance that any particular die will have a star, but there's a one in three chance it'll be a particular value. That's why you'll see that these numbers are lower than the surrounding spaces, because the odds are lower. And it's going to continue clockwise, players increasing bids and so on, until one person challenges. It says, okay, I don't think there are eight twos. I challenge. At that point, everybody reveals all the dice under their cups and count how many there are. One, two, three, none here, none here, four, five. There are only five twos. Somebody bid eight twos. So what happens then? The loser, in this case, the player who, who made the bid, has to give up a number of dice equal to the difference, three dice, because the bid was eight twos and there were only five twos. So they would lose three dice. The dice go in the middle, so everybody can see at all times how many dice are still in play. If it turns out there were 10 twos, then the player who bid this would win, because there are at least eight twos. And the player who challenged would then lose the difference, in this case, two dice. You may want to consider, if you're playing with fewer players, or if you're playing with a lot of new players, to have it so that when somebody loses a challenge, they only lose one die maximum. Uh, some versions of the game have that rule. Um, it makes a three-player game last longer, and it's a little less punishing for people who are not familiar with the game. Let's say somebody bid nine fives and challenged, and look, there are exactly five, oops, six, seven, eight, nine, nine fives. So the bid is exact. What happens there? Well, in this version of the game, the player who bid this amount and got it exactly right wins the challenge, but the loser doesn't lose anything alone. All the remaining players lose a die. Some people don't like to lose a die when they weren't involved in the challenge. Of course, it's speeding the game up and it's giving the player who bid exactly a little extra benefit compared to all the other players. But it's also perfectly fine to just say that the person who challenged just loses a single die. So after the loser of the challenge gives up their dice, then it's a new round. All the players will take all their dice back into their cups, shake them up, and start a new round. And in this version of the game, 
the winner of the challenge then starts the next round. And you keep playing until when all players except one have been eliminated. That's how you play Bluff. It's kind of a strange bluffing game in which you are giving information, you're making guesses or bluffs, not just on your info, but on everyone's info. Bluffing in this case means making a bid of, you know, three fives, and actually you have no fives. It's not clear that does you any favors <laughs> doing that. I guess I like my bluffing games a little bit more a little bit more directed like i have information you don't and you're judging whether i'm bluffing or not based on what i'm saying to you and and the information that only i have and that's the only thing you're judging on as opposed to trying to judge what everybody has it's more of a probabilities thing Right? You know how many dice are in play. Every value has a 1 in 3 chance of appearing on a single die because it's either the face value or the wild. The bluffing is really more calculating whether the odds are in your favor to challenge or not to challenge. That's what I find anyway. If the bid starts low and goes for a while, so it goes around the table, and especially if you start seeing people's bids come up a second time so one person bid and goes around the table and they're bidding again then okay there's information that you can go on right because they said this last time and now they're saying this of course you can bid any amount you want you can start low and arguably the game is a little more interesting when it starts low because you gain more information before you have to risk challenging but of course people can jump right they can jump ahead to a high value and then it's not going to make it very far. And so whoever is challenging doesn't really have much information to go on to judge whether that's a bluff or not. Again, it's based on what you have under your cup and the probabilities. A suggested player count is a little bit tricky. It's probably better with fewer players um, because you have the greater potential for a single player making a bid more than once. I actually find the game a little bit boring um, with, say, just three players. One of the advantages of the, games is, of the game is that it supports a large number, so you can play this version, Bluff plays up to six players, and if I was to recommend a version, I would recommend a version that goes up to six. Um, a lot of the versions of Liar's Dice that you find only go up to four. It's not that it's better with more players, but it's light enough and it's interactive enough that it it's not really harmed a great deal by having more players. Um, it's one of those just kind of goofy fun games that you can enjoy. If you're trying hard to win, you'll probably not enjoy it with five or six players as much as you would with three or four. You gotta treat it more like a party game. When you're playing with many players, it may not even get to you, you know? <laughs> you know, the bid, 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 challenge. Okay, I'm not involved. I was never involved at any point. <laughs> and so it's hard to make a, a judge a judgment because there are some people from whom you haven't heard anything. So you have no idea what's under their cups. The game does have player elimination, which for this sort of game, I don't hold it too much against it. It's just a kind of a silly party game. But there are a couple of qualities of the game that can potentially make for a bad experience. And it's a good time to talk about the variants. Um, the way I taught the game and the how to play is how they present the rules in Bluff. But there are many different ways to play. The biggest difference in rules is how many dice you lose due to a failed challenge. According to the rules of bluff, you lose a number of dice equal to the difference. So if somebody bid six of something and you challenged and it turns out there were only four, then that person would lose two dice. So I like losing one die a lot more than losing multiple. I do like that the stakes are high, but because you have often very little information to go on, it feels very punishing uh, when somebody is way, way off of a challenge. 
So maximizing the number of dice you could potentially lose to one helps with that a bit. It's also better when you're playing with fewer players. Uh, when you're playing with just three players, say, a couple of challenges and boom, the game is over, right? Because <laughs> you can lose dice so fast. But having said that, if you're playing with many players, the game is going to take a really long time. The game can be very repetitive. And if you're playing with six players and each player's each challenge only results in one player losing a die, that game is going to take a while. So you may want to consider fewer players just lose one die, more players lose multiple. I personally like playing with just one die, and that also kind of solves, I suppose, a weird feature when you play with losing multiple dice. Somebody bids six of something, and you challenge. Turns out it's exactly six. Well, if you lose the difference in dice, there's no dice lost, right? You can kind of house rule it, but the official way, in this version anyway, is that everybody else loses a die. Now I understand from a design point of view why they did that, because it helps speed the game up, right? That person is who got the bid bang on, they're getting a benefit relative to everyone else. Having said that, if you're not involved in the challenge and you lose a die, that can feel unfair. <laughs> but if it's just always lose a die for any challenge, then it still works completely fine. There is a variant that I've never played, and it's it's listed in Bluff as a variant for professional players. When you commit to raising the bid, you may set aside some of the dice you've already rolled, keeping their values and making them visible for everybody else, and which allows you to re-roll the rest of them. I've never felt any compulsion to try that, because I value simplicity. And that just adds like an extra rule that I'm not sure the benefit outweighs the cost of having an extra rule. Honestly, I'm going to play this game with casual gamers, non-gamers. I'm not really going to play this game with hobbyists. So if I can keep the rules to a minimum, that's better and it's more likely the game will get played. Less confusing for everyone involved. Uh, there is a variant in, and this is, these ones are more like Perudo Dudo derived. Um, you can call uh, Calza, I think is, is the word. You're declaring that you think this bid that you're making is exact. And if you're wrong, you're wrong. But if you're right, you actually gain a die back. I understand it's a way to keep people in the game, you know, and if you're, starting to fall behind that's a way to try to try to catch up but a it's a big risk and b it's going to prolong the game to me it feels like free parking in in uh, you know um you know luxury tax money goes on free parking in monopoly right it's it's fun when you win it but it's just delaying the game for everybody so uh don't like that personally but that's uh, not an uncommon variant and the other one what's the name Polifico. When somebody loses their second last die, so they only have one die left, the next round is a special round called a Polifico. The player who has just one die left, they start the bid. And normally in a normal round of Perudo or Dudo, you can raise either the value or the count, the number of dice that you think have that value. But in a Polifico round, if you have more than one die, you cannot change the value. Whoever set that value had just one die, and only players who have one die can change the value. But everybody else who has two or more, they can only increase the bid by increasing the number of dice, not the value. Just for that one round. And then the next round after that is normal, unless in that round somebody loses their second last die. It's kind of a way to not really catch up necessarily, but to give an advantage just for one round so they feel more in the game. Because when you have one die left, there, there's not much you can do. One complaint I have about the game is that the poor get poorer, all right? When you lose a challenge, you lose dice. 
And when you lose dice, you have less information to go on compared to everybody else. So that means that you're at a disadvantage compared to people who still have most of their dice. And so the when, when you start losing dice, it's very easy to keep messing up and keep losing more dice. I wouldn't say it's huge, but it's there. The Polifico round is just like a like a feel good round to so that people don't feel like as close to the edge. They feel less likely to lose in the next round because it's a Polifico round that kind of gives them an advantage over the the players who have more dice and so have an advantage that way. It's fine. Again, for me, it's just like it's an extra rule that uh, some people would value, but I don't really get much out of if I'm just playing with casual players. So this game you can play with just dice and cups, right? Um, you have to remember that one of the values is an ace or a, or a wild, uh, so use the one for that. Or you can even use poker dice. Probably want to make the ace a wild. If you buy a proper version, the main decision usually is whether to go Liar's Dice or Perudo. Both have their advantages. Perudo slash Dudo often have dice and cups that are the same color. So as dice are eliminated and they go to the to the middle of the table, you can actually see which players are missing dice, which can be useful. Most editions of Bluff, Liar's Dice uh, don't do that. It's just they're all the same dice, all the same cups. One recommendation that I would make is if you're going to buy a copy, get one that plays six players. A lot of them only go up to four, and that surprises me. It's such an easy game to go up to six, and I could argue that it's not as good with five or six, and it is with maybe four. Four is probably the ideal number. But it's a simple game, and it can go up to six very easily. So if you're going to buy a version, buy one that goes up to six players. Another difference between Perudo and Liar's Dice is that Liar's Dice often comes with a board. Whereas Perudo is just played with the dice and the cups, Liar's Dice often comes with a board that has spaces on it for the bidding. Not necessary, especially if you're playing with six players. You know, it's usually a tiny, tiny board. Maybe it's hard for some people to, to reach or they feel a little bit disconnected um, when they're playing with the board because it's so far away and so tiny. Um, but it is kind of a nice thing to have because obviously it visualizes the current bid. And moreover, because you can bid on how many uh, wilds there are, there is a formula. It's half rounded up or down, I forget. <laughs> but the board just makes it obvious, right? These spaces, the wild spaces are placed in between the regular spaces in the right places for the odds of that thing happening. So it just it's kind of a nice feature to have. So I like having the board personally. Either way, it's the perfect outdoor game. You know, there's so many board games that have cards, obviously, or or little pieces, little bits that can get lost. And that's a big, big advantage of Perudo Liar's Dice is that it's just dice and cups and maybe a board and that's it. So it's almost the perfect outdoor game. Even if it's windy, it's not going to affect your game at all. So as a bluffing game and a simple game to play with casual gamers, non-gamers, and a game that you can play outside without worrying about losing bits... To me, Liar's Dice is perfect for that specific role. I wouldn't say that Bluff, Liar's Dice, is my favorite bluffing game, but I always enjoy playing it. There are two games in particular that are my favorite bluffing games, and for most people, I would probably recommend them above, before uh, Liar's Dice, unless, again, you're playing outside. To me, the, the best replacement for Liar's Dice slash Bluff is Cockroach Poker, which actually I've seen also referred to as Bug Bluff. <laughs> now this is more of a pure bluffing game in which you have a card and you're telling somebody what it is and then they're trying to judge whether you're lying or telling the truth. Sounds way too simple. It gets 
more interesting because instead of immediately challenging, you can pass that card off to someone else and give it an, a new uh, value. And so the new person getting it now might maybe here's two different things. Again, it's also really, really simple and it plays up to six players, I believe. To me, the only advantage of bluff slash liar's dice over cockroach poker is the well the dice are fun <laughs> rolling dice is fun shaking dice in the dice cup is fun and it's a better outdoors game because it's not a deck of cards the other one much more recent game is a card game called spicy this has the brilliant idea of now you're playing cards, you're try it's a shedding game, you're trying to get rid of all your cards, and you're playing the cards face down, and you're declaring what they are. And they have to follow certain rules, like you have to follow suit, and the only thing that'll play a 9 is a 10, but you can't start over to a 1, 2, or 3 unless somebody plays a 10. So there are rules involved in what you're allowed to play, but you're trying to get rid of all your cards, and you can lie. And the brilliant thing about Spicy is that when somebody challenges you, they have to guess in what way you're lying, whether you're lying because of its value or you're lying because of its suit. It creates a lot of emotion in that game when you challenge and you reveal and they were lying. You were right. They were lying, but they were lying about a different thing than what you said and what you had challenged them on was they were actually telling the truth about. And you feel the frustration, but in a good way. So I love spicy, I love cockroach poker, I like liar's dice. One advantage of those other two that I think really make them better choices to bluff or liar's dice, the player order isn't fixed. So in cockroach poker, you can choose to whom to give your card. And they may challenge you or they may pass it on to someone else, someone else they choose. In spicy, play is clockwise, but anybody can challenge. Liar's Dice is forced clockwise. It's going clockwise, left, all around the table, and only the player to your left can challenge your bid. That makes it very samey, especially when you're playing with some people who are just like challenge happy. <laughs> so it's like, oh, you know it's not going to get around past this person because you know they're going to challenge, right? If you're going to play multiple games in a row of Liar's Dice, which is very normal because it's not that long a game usually, um, it is a good idea to kind of mix up the player order a little bit. You know, have just people change their seating just to change up that part of it. It's super simple rules. It's a lot of fun to shake the dice and then slam your cup down. It's It has a very active um, physical factor to the to to the fun of the game for most people i think some of the other bluffing games would serve just as well maybe better um, but for its niche which is a, a simple game which has some fun dice cup shaking and to play outdoors you know no cards no little pieces that can get lost it's a great outdoor game it's a good end of night game it's a palate cleanser right you know, you play, maybe you played a big heavy game and I just want to play something that's light and fun, lets you shake a, a dice cup around. And you know what? At the end of the night, player elimination is not that big a deal. If somebody gets eliminated, that's when they can leave. <laughs> that's the end of the night for them. And the other people can keep playing for just a little bit longer. So I still enjoy Bluff and Liar's Dice. I still keep it. It's a game that'll be staying in my collection. Thanks for watching. Remember... Older games like Bluff, Liar's Dice, Perudo, Dudo, don't stop being good just because newer games come out. Take care.